A classic visual proof utilizes stacks of squares to represent the integers as pictured here. For this proof, we remove every other stack, leaving us only with the stacks of squares corresponding to the odd integers, 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, up to 2k minus 1. The question is, what is the sum of these first k odd integers? We can rotate each stack about its central element, and we obtain gnomons, which we can then stack together. The resulting shape is a square with a side length of k. So the sum of the first k odd integers is k times k, or k squared. We can write this as the sum where i ranges from 1 to k of 2i minus 1 equals k squared. In order to find the appropriate generalization of this result, we notice that we can think of the previous result as lining up the counting numbers in a linear array like this. Then we remove every other integer, allowing us to remove the even integers, and leaving us only with the odd integers. Then as we saw, in this case, since we have 8 remaining odd integers, this sum is equal to 8 squared. We can also arrange the counting numbers in arrays that form different kinds of shapes. For instance, let's place the integers in a triangular array from top to bottom and left to right. When we do this, we see that the entry at the end of each row is the nth triangular number. The triangular numbers are given by the sum of the first n positive integers. With this shape in hand, let's go through and remove every other row so that we're only left with the odd indexed rows in the triangular array. In this array, each row can be obtained by taking the difference of the triangular number of the nth triangular number minus the triangular number of the n minus first triangular number, as pictured here. So the sum of the entries in the odd indexed rows from the triangular array can be given by this complicated sum formula here. Is there a way to find an easier formula for this? Let's revisit the same technique, where we imagine all the integers laid out this way, and a stack of n blocks living above the integer n, like this. Now let's go through and remove the runs of integers that correspond to the even index rows from the triangular array. The remaining blocks give us the sum that we're interested in, so let's find another way to count them. The contiguous stacks correspond to the odd indexed rows in the triangular array, so we can stack them together like this. Each stack has a side length of i squared plus i minus 1 squared plus i minus 1 for the i ranging from 1 to k. Now we can use the triangular array with a base of length i minus 1 from the top right of each stack to turn the stacks into rectangular stacks. Now each stack can be split to form the L-shaped gnomon with an outer edge of size i squared and an inner edge of size i minus 1 squared. Because the i values range from 1 up to k, we see that these gnomons will fit together to form a square shape. The outer edge is length k squared. We can see that two different ways. k minus 1 squared plus 2k minus 1 is k squared, and the sum of the first k odd integers is k squared. Therefore, the sum that we were interested in, which is the sum of the entries from the odd indexed rows in a triangular array, is given by k squared times k squared, which is k to the fourth. So we have found a closed formula for the complicated sum that we wrote earlier. But why stop at triangular arrays? What if we took a square array? and filled in the integers in the L-shaped gnomon pattern that we've seen a few times already today. Then we can go through and we can remove the even indexed gnomons, like this. What's left is the sum of the integers from the odd indexed gnomons. What's the sum of the entries here? And what if we tried analogous processes for other polygonal arrays, like pentagons, hexagons, and so on? If you're interested in these types of questions, see the paper linked in the description for a general visual proof for these kinds of sums.